Hi, and welcome back to another NERPG development livestream. In these videos, I livestream the development of the NERPG engine, a 100% free and open source role playing game engine designed in Unity and written in C. Sharp. If you don't already have a copy of NERPG, you can pick one up from nerpg.org slash downloads in both Unity package and source code format. You can also find free copies of the games that I work on available for download at the same page. In this episode, we will be adding a merchant bazaar, which is uh, like a little market filled with merchants. And we're going to use a whole pile of free assets from that, from the asset store and elsewhere. For the level that this is in, we're using the Sun Temple, and this is an awesome free asset on the Asset Store. And we'll be using these little banner posts here for hanging clothes on, and these come from the Medieval Stone Keep free asset on the Asset Store. We'll be using a weapons rack from the Megacy Fantasy Props Pack, which is another free asset, and you can just barely kind of see the weapons rack out of the corner here. We will be using this blacksmith from the Castle Supply Light free asset pack for our blacksmith forge. We will be using this awesome animated blacksmith dude for the actual blacksmith, which is found on Sketchfab, and once again, I'll have a link in the description for that. We'll be using this hero warrior here for our armor vendor, and this is another free asset off Sketchfab. We'll be using Andan, a free asset from the Unity Asset Store, for making our leather worker guy. We'll be using this awesome Orishkin half-elf character from Sketchfab for our cloth merchant. We will be using this guy for our cook or butcher. We'll be using the Yugi's Free Fur Materials Pack from the Unity Asset Store for our hides on the wall. We will be using this really cool animated peasant as just kind of a prop in the level. And we'll be using the Eki Forge Uma Armors Pack 1 for the armor that we're going to have available in to buy. We'll also be using for this really cool bow here the Free Medieval Pack of Weapons also from the Unity Asset Store. And finally, from the Unity Asset Store, we'll be using this incredible free shield and sword asset pack here, which has so many shields and swords that look really nice in the game. So let's get started. What I've done basically is I found an area that I wanted to make the bazaar over here in the Sun Temple. And this is kind of the like motif I was going for. This I wanted to have like a bunch of merchants uh, hanging around in sort of a covered area, and this kind of looked like it was almost what I needed. So basically, what I had to do is just sort of get rid of all the bushes and get rid of all the trees, basically, and then just uh, mess around with the buildings and you know duplicate them and pull them in until I had like a nice um, sort of setup for the whole thing. And same with the panels, you know, just uh, duplicate those and uh, pull them out until I had the whole thing surrounded nicely. And then this area used to be sort of all mud and I didn't want the merchants to be in mud. So what I did is just um, use the Unity Terrain Tools. So you can just go to the paint here and you can choose to uh, paint details. And if you hold down shift and paint, then it'll remove everything. So you can see you just remove all the grass there. And then to actually paint the texture, you can go over here and go paint and choose paint texture. And then in this case, you can just basically replace all that brown texture with this nice uh, sort of sidewalky texture here. And, you know, get rid of all the bushes and you've cleared yourself out uh, like a nice bazaar area basically. So once that was all done, let's just back everything up here, restore it all, um, and then I'll open up the actual Sun Temple level and we'll see what I came up with here and then go from there.
so here's the real Sun Temple level. The, the whole area has been cleared out basically and it's been made into a much bigger building which the merchants can actually fit in. Over at the end here we've got the blacksmith's forge and then we have the blacksmith model placeholder and then we've got this uh, cool shop right here as well. Let's uh, actually just pull this thing out and make it a little bigger so you can see here. There we go. Um, we got this shop right here and I put a bunch of these uh, things on mannequins and uh, put a bunch of the shields on the wall and we've got like a couple of empty stalls here but then we've got um, the challenger armor over here behind here and this guy with these sort of like fur hides hanging on the wall behind him and then the weapons rack over there with a bunch of swords and our guy sitting there making a bow placeholder and then bows and arrows and stuff over here. And then in our last one, we've got this uh, cloth fender here, and we've got some of the Uma armor on display, as well as a bunch of cloth stuff. So for the, um, sorry, let me just fix the layout here. There we go. So for the cloth stuff, um, these are literally just the prop cloth pieces that come with, um, that come with the Unity, um, or I mean that come with the Sun Temple scene. And for the leather pieces, all I did basically was I would just duplicate the cloth pieces. So let's just um, control D to duplicate that and then switch the fabric out for one of those fur fabrics. So we have like fur pattern four, for example. And then now we've got basically like a hide hanging on the wall uh, if we get rid of the original one so we don't see them interfering. Yeah, there we go. Um, and that's pretty much it. That was, uh, that's how I made all of those. So let's back that change up there. Perfect. And then for the armor here, um, let's just actually put one of these, uh, one more of these armors here, because there's actually like six varieties of this armor. So right here, we're using male torso 1A, 2A, and 3B. So why don't we do one of these for male torso um, 2B as well? So I'm going to get out of the terrain tools here, click on one of these posts here, Control D to duplicate it, and then just drag it forward, and then we'll hang some more armor on it. So what we'll do is we'll just go to the folder where this uh, male torso is found. We'll select that right there, and we want to do type 1B. So the male torso, I think we want to do actually type 1A. see actually. Uh, we have 1A. Okay, we actually do want to do 1B. Okay, so we'll go to the male torso type 1B and we'll literally just like pull it into the scene here and hit W to rotate it and hold down control, rotate it 90 degrees so it's facing towards us. Uh, hit W to drag it there and then just pull it up so it basically looks like it's hanging on this rack right here. And then what I've done is made these guys all a little bit bigger. So I'm going to set this armor's scale as 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. And then move it down until it's sitting nicely on the rack there. And now we've got a red version and we've got the copper version. So we'll want to do the helmet as well. So we'll do the helmet 1B also. So we'll just pull the male helm type 1B into the scene. Middle click, Control, Alt, F. Ah, I see. The helm is missing the mesh. So since this is the helm 1B, we want to look for helm and then look for 1B in this list right here. And 
There we go. That's the 1B helm mesh, and now we can see the helm and it's visible. No, it's not visible. Let's try that again. Okay, that's interesting. Um, the helm should be visible. Let's um, just take a look at one of the other helms. I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? That's because that's the female helm. I want the male helm. That's why the mesh isn't working. So yeah, that would be why. Okay, um, we'll click on that. Click there and look for the male type 1B. There we go. So this is the male type 1B. There, and now we've got the proper mesh on it. So if we jump out there, we can see our helmet now. I'm going to set the size to 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. And then I'm going to hit E and control to rotate it towards me. And then W to move it down and basically place it on the post there. Maybe move it up a little bit. And forward a little bit too, so it sort of fits there a little better. There we go. So now we've got more sets of armor here in there. Um, next thing that we should do is add some animations. So all of these guys are just placeholders right now, so we need to make actual units for them and make them into merchants and such. So I'm just going to take these two pieces of armor and move them into the plate armor there. And then we want to take our hero warrior. So we've got this bald warrior model here and we'll want to make a merchant out of him. So to do that, um, I think I'm going to use one of the merchant units that exists already. So we have a GM vendor unit. I'm just going to duplicate this guy, hold down Control D to do that. And I'm going to rename him to the plate vendor unit. I'm going to remove the UMA components from him because this isn't an UMA character. So remove the dynamic character avatar, remove the animator, remove the character animation event receiver, and remove the audio source component. And he doesn't need to be a quest giver, so we'll set that size to zero for the quests, and I think that's everything that we need to do for now. For the vendor profiles, um, he's going to have zero quest prerequisites, and his vendor collection, we're going to make one called Plate Armor, so Plate Armor and set the vendor collection size to 1. Um, for the unit frame target, we'll want to actually set that up. So let's give him his model here. Um, first I'm going to add some audio sources to him. So we'll pull the unit audio sources onto him. And then we'll go down into the unit audio source here and we'll make a link to the effects and a link to the voice audio source. Then we'll want to find the bald warrior model, pull him onto here, and let's hit F to focus on this here. He looks like he is about the right size. He's about two meters tall there, so that's good. And we'll want to see 
what his head bone is called. So it looks like Mixigmo Rig Head is the name of his head bone. So I'm just going to hit F2 to copy that, or in Control C to copy, and then we'll go down and set his unit frame target right here. So we're looking at his head. And I think his head was a little mixed up. It looks like his head uh, locally, no, it's actually fine. Um, Z forward, which is what we want. So we will set Z 0 0.66 is good. His character name will be Plate Vendor. The faction name will be Sunsworn. He can be a warrior. And that should be good enough. Basically, having the vendor script on him makes him into a vendor. I left the quest giver on in case we want to add quests in the future, but we don't really need to. So then we'll want to make sure that we go onto his model here. Uh, he's got the right avatar. He's got the character animation event receiver. We'll just pull the plate unit there. And he should just use the regular standard humanoid animations. So let's take our plate vendor unit here. I'll pull him into the chapter two content. And then we'll pull him into the scene here. Let's grab this guy here, the bald warrior model. Uh, we're just going to copy his transform component here. Then we're going to go onto the plate vendor unit and we are going to paste the component values. So he's standing exactly where the old plate vendor was. And then we'll take the bald warrior model and just disable him. And now we should have an animated guy right there. Next up, we'll want to do the Noble Craftsman. So this guy, um, I'm just going to call him Noble Blacksmith. So we'll want to make a unit for him as well. Um, he's not going to be a vendor of any sort. He's just going to be an animated craftsman guy smacking his hammer there. So. What I'll do is I can basically just copy any old unit, and since we know that the plate vendor unit has all the newest correct settings on it, I'm just going to hit Control D to copy the plate vendor unit. I'm going to rename this to the blacksmith unit, and I'm going to open up his prefab, remove the bald warrior model, and Put the noble craftsman on there. We'll set the noble reset the noble craftsman's transform. Head down, check the size. Our noble craftsman here is looking a little bit short right here. Actually, you know what? I think he isn't. I think he's kind of a dwarf by, by nature. I didn't really notice that before. Okay, so that's fine, basically. So, we'll take the blacksmith unit here, pull it into the NPCs. We will go to the noble craftsman. We're going to copy his component for the transform. Then we're going to go to the blacksmith unit and we are going to paste the component values. So now our blacksmith is right there. Now we can take away the one that's not a proper unit. For the blacksmith unit, he is, I'm just going to remove the vendor script. You know what? Actually, I'm going to keep the vendor script because who knows, maybe he sells us blacksmithing tools or something later doesn't hurt just to leave that on there. And the next thing I'm going to do is set the unit frame target. So let's open up the blacksmith unit 
and look for a head bone. Base human head looks like the right one. I'm just going to control C to copy that and check to see if it's locally Z forward. It isn't. It's actually locally Y forward. And it looks like considering that sort of his neck, we'll want it more than 0.66, probably a full meter out in front of him. So we will paste the name of that bone right there and set it to a Y value of 1 for the camera position. We'll set his name to Blacksmith and just keep his character class name at Warrior. That's fine. All right, this guy has his own animation, so we'll want to go into the Noble Craftsman here, keep the avatar. We'll want to add the character animation event receiver, added component, apply that to the Noble Craftsman, and pull down the character unit right there. This guy will need his own animation profile, so what we'll do is um, we'll go into the resources folder under a lost soul. We've got animation profiles and we have AI here. I'm just going to right click create a new NERPG animation profile and call this the blacksmith. Resource name will just be blacksmith and he has an animation clip that we'll want to use that came with him. So he's under our third party content characters, human, noble, blacksmith. And his animation is right here. It's take 001. Let's maybe just duplicate that and we're going to call this blacksmith idle and let's just take a look at that all right so we want to loop time loop pose and then bake all of the orientations in here and now he does it standing still Okay, good. So then we'll add that as the idle animation on his animation profile. So when he's standing around, he's just doing that like all the time. So we'll go down to the blacksmith animation profile here. Open this up and grab the NERPG blacksmith idle and put it on his idle clip. And then we'll go down to the blacksmith unit and look at the character animator and under the default animation profile we'll choose blacksmith that should be everything that we need in order to get that guy working next up we want to do andan andan is just a standard humanoid here so i'm going to go to the andan prefab I'm going to select that one's location. Um, I have already duplicated him and called him Farmer Model. I'm going to open up his prefab and he doesn't need to be carrying a stick. So we're just going to take this wood object here and disable it. The next thing that we want to do is make a unit for him. So I'm going to call him the leather vendor. So we'll just take our plate vendor unit. We'll hit control D to duplicate him. call him the leather vendor unit, open up his prefab, delete the bald warrior model, pull on the farmer model, hit F to focus on it, check his height, looks okay, 
this capsule's two meters tall. We'll want to change his name and set his head and make sure we pull that character unit down onto the character animation event receiver. Looking for his head, it's just called head. Looks like it's in the right spot. Locally it's X is upside down but Z is still forward. We'll pull the leather vendor unit into the scene here. Open that up and paste in the head there and change his name to Leather Vendor. Next up, we'll want to actually give him the vendor stuff he's selling. So instead of plate armor, we'll set the vendor collection as leather armor. Everything else should be okay. He's a standard humanoid. He doesn't have any special animations needed. For this guy right here, we'll want to actually set his custom animations. Oh yeah, and I guess I need to get the leather vendor at the right spot because Andan's there, but he's not. So we're going to click on Andan's prefab here, right click the transform, copy the component, then go down to the leather vendor unit and paste the component values on the transform and then we can go back to the andan prefab, disable it, and now we've got a guy standing there without a stick who should be animated when we press play. For our uh, bowyer here who's going to just be sitting there carving his wood, we'll want to do something about that. So the bowyer anim is found here. And I'm just going to add the word model to that to be consistent. He needs a character animation event receiver as well. And then we'll need to basically make him, I think, into a vendor as well. Um, I'll call him the weapons vendor for now. So take the leather vendor unit here. We will control D to duplicate it. We will call him the weapon vendor unit. We'll open up his prefab here. We'll get rid of the farmer model. grab the bowyer anim model and pull him on here. Hit F to focus on it. Capsule's about the right size there. We'll pull the character unit down onto the character animation event receiver. We'll set his character name as weapon vendor. and the vendor collections as weapons. We'll want to also animate him. So the Bowyer Anim over here has a take 001. We'll duplicate that. Apply that, loop the time, loop the pose, apply it again. That looks good for the animation. Um, if you, These boxes here are just because the bones uh, are actually set to have visibility in here, um, but that won't matter for our model because we've got a good model for him. So we're going to take this take 001 and we're going to call it Bowyer Idol.
and apply that. So now we'll want to actually make the idle for him. So we've got the blacksmith profile here. I'm just going to control D to duplicate the blacksmith profile and we will call it the bowyer and set the resource name to bowyer and set the idle clip to any RPG bowyer idle. Then we'll go back to the weapon vendor unit here and under the default animation profile we'll set it to bowyer which will give him the correct idle clip. And next we need to look for his head. His head is B BIP001 head, so we will hit F2 and Control C to copy that. And then actually, you know what? His head looks like it's sort of facing in a weird direction. Um, his head is Y forward, not Z forward. So going down to his unit frame, we need to set the head to this and then set the look val or the camera position to a y value of 0 0.66. Okay, and finally we want to do the cloth vendor, which is this really cool half elf orishkin over here, looking very sort of noble and merchant like. So for that, um, We'll basically do what we did with the other ones. So I will control D to duplicate the leather vendor unit. I will call it the cloth vendor unit. We'll open that up. We'll get rid of the farmer model and We'll search for the Orishkin model, which is the name that this was downloaded under. We will reset the transform position to 000, and hit F to focus on it. Check the height. Height looks good. It's a little sort of shorter elf, like five and a half feet tall there. And we'll go on to the Orishkin model. We'll add the character animation event receiver. We'll pull down the unit onto that, right click, added component, apply to prefab. Then we'll go up to the cloth vendor unit up here. We'll set the character name to cloth vendor. Warrior is fine, faction name is fine. We want to find his head. Looks like it's just head and blue arrows forward, so it's Z forward. Control C to copy that and actually it's already set to head so that's good and Z 0.66 will put the camera right about there looking back at him when we click on him to get his unit frame. Finally we'll set his vendor collection name to cloth armor. That looks pretty good now we actually have to go make the vendor collections. So I believe I had a master vendor collection just called armor. Yeah that looks about right. This was for our original GM vendor, so we're going to make a bunch of these. Control D to duplicate that. So we need plate armor, leather armor, cloth armor, and we've already got a weapons one as well. So we're going to call this cloth armor. Set the resource name to cloth armor. We'll want to basically remove everything that isn't cloth. So delete that array element. Just delete all the plate stuff. Capes are kind of cloth, I guess. I don't have an accessories vendor yet, so we'll let the cape be a cloth thing. Uh, 
Okay, so we can basically remove the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen. We can remove the last fourteen, so that means that we want nineteen. Okay, good. Uh, I think I did my math wrong there. Yeah, that looks better. 17, because it's two sets of eight plus the cape. Okay, perfect. So now we've got all the cloth armor. So now let's do the leather armor. So this time we have to go through and remove all the cloth stuff and all the plate stuff. Okay, so we got almost everything there. Delete a bunch more plate stuff out of here. Okay, and that's correct. We have 16, which is two sets of eight. Perfect, and finally we want to do the plate armor. So we'll just want to go through basically and delete everything that's not played. Okay, uh, we've got 18 there. Right, there's one cloth there and another cloth there. Okay, good, 16. Perfect, so I wanna change the name up here to plate armor and just make sure that I did that for both cloth armor and leather armor. So I need to change the name up there to leather armor. All right, and I believe actually the Orishkin has his own idle animation. Let me just confirm that. Wow, so he actually kind of does have an idle. It's kind of creepy. He does like that weird blink every once in a while and he's like barely moving, but or she, I mean. But yeah, you can see the body shifting slightly. Okay. I think I, I actually kind of like that. Um, so we'll use that animation. What we want to do is just make sure loop time, loop pose, loop everything else essentially, hit apply. And I just want to see the issue, because apparently there was some issues with that import message there. So let's just check those out.
Oh, okay. Just slight rotation errors with the shin. Um, that's nothing particularly terrible. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So we'll use that then. So what we want to do is we've got the Bowyer animation profile there. I'm just going to control D to duplicate that. And I'm going to call this one the cloth vendor animation profile, set the resource name to cloth vendor, set the idle clip to character orshkin base action. Now we want to go to the cloth vendor unit and set the default animation profile to cloth vendor. Okay, let's save that. And actually, you know what? I think our bald warrior actually has his own animation profile. And I think it would actually be cool to see everyone doing their own animations rather than the generic default animations. So it looks like he does here. Take 001 is not the right one. Mixamo.com. Looks like a very paranoid animation. Actually, you know what? I think I'm just going to keep the default animation right now because it looks like he's like he's way too paranoid. He's like a guard or something like that. That's not what somebody who's you want to buy stuff from is going to be doing. So, in that case, um, let's just make sure I have the correct Arishkin here. So we have the Arishkin model, and what I need is the cloth vendor unit so we'll take the Arishkin model we will right click on the transform we'll copy the components we'll go down to the cloth vendor unit and we will paste the component values then we'll take the Arishkin model and disable him so now we have plate vendor blacksmith leather vendor cloth vendor and I, we also need the weapon vendor So we'll pull the weapon vendor unit into the NPCs there. We will go to the Bowyer Anim. We will copy his transform component. We'll go to the weapon vendor unit. We will paste the component values. We'll hit F to focus on him. And disable the Bowyer Anim. I also have a butcher unit that I've already added up in here. Um, we're not really using him for the bazaar, but I found basically a bunch of ovens and a kitchen here, and this is like the sort of highest concentration of ovens in the game. And actually the ovens are very, very conveniently located right outside this sort of courtyard here with some picnic tables where I've been adding in the, uh, the warrior trainer who I found. He's a really cool crusader knight free asset on the asset store. Um, and then this Karate Man. These guys are just sort of placeholders for now. Um, so let's save everything there. And I think that's all the guys in there. So we'll go to the Load Game Manager here. Let's press play. I have a guy waiting for me there in the Sun Temple by the Merchant Bazaar, so we'll just load him up. And 
he's over here by my uh, temporary trainers. So we'll just hop on our tiger and head down to the bazaar. You know what I think I might do? I think in the bazaar, I might actually add some of these like cloth poles coming out from it. I think that would actually look really cool. So the bazaar is located just outside the front gates of the temple over here to the left. And let's hop off our horse here. And if we look at our blacksmith, he has um, a buyback, actually, because he's a vendor. He doesn't have anything other than the buyback, um, but that's why he's got that sign over him. Um, this animation is looking pretty good, with the exception of the fact um, that the hammer is not moving along with his hand. So what we're going to need to do is basically just put the hammer in his hand, pretty much. Um, it also looks like the sparks aren't really playing either. So I'll have to see about that. Um, it might be the fact that I switched the rig type to humanoid from generic. And we may need it to be generic for that stuff. We'll go talk to our plate vendor over here. He's just sort of standing around looking okay. We've got all our armor in here, so we can go check it out. We can talk to him, and we can buy all of our initiates gear and all of our Earth Dwellers gear from him. If I right click on these initiates plate bracers, they show up in my inventory and it tells me I purchased them. I can right click and sell that item and I have a little more gold. Perfect. We'll head over to our leather vendor over here. And Dan is standing around. He doesn't have a stick and we can actually click on him and see all the leather armor that he has to sell. So that's good. Um, for these, I copied them from the Challenger set from Unity. It's a deprecated set, but I downloaded it before it was deprecated, so I still had a copy of it, and it looks like I forgot to disable the animator components, so they're still looking around and playing that character's um, idle animation. Here's our bowyer over here, and he's skillfully hacking away at um, his pole there. Looking pretty cool. We can wand over and we can right click on him and we can see all the shields and swords and katars and dragon blades and stuff that we had on the original GM vendor. Finally, we can head over to our cloth vendor over here. And Let's actually just watch him for a while and see if he does the blink. So he's kind of swaying back and forth a little bit. Oh, you know what? I see. Um, I made his eyelids too transparent because when you look at his model, it looks weird if his eyelids are black, but I now understand why. Um, I think because they're part of his animation. So let's just save our character here. We've got a couple things to fix. We've got to fix the blacksmith's hammer. We want to fix Orishkin's eyelids. And we want to fix the animation on the challenger armor pieces. So we'll go to the Orishkin. And if we go to his texture for, let's actually just um, open up his prefab here for a second. Basically, he's got these eyes and it's the facial two texture. These are the eyelids. It's weird that they're not, um, I'm 
not sure actually where his eyelids are then. So that's the eyes. Oh, and this is the ridge of the eyes. It's actually, there's the there's another Oriskin character, like a second version of her that's actually a him, um, and that one has the, um, the eyelids. I think actually it's potentially the eyeballs themselves might rotate as part of that animation, and that might not be working in the human version of her animation. Um, not really a huge deal. So... Let's go back to the Noble Craftsman and just check out that animation right here. So basically, if you look at this Noble Craftsman animation, um, you can see the guy's hand does move through there, so that's not particularly attached to it. Um, but this thing, basically, it moves and it sparks. And the hammer is in his hand and it's staying with his hand. And if we look at the NERPG Blacksmith Idol, we, we see the same thing, um, although that's not what we're seeing. In the animation, so let's just set this to generic for a second. And I want to see if that works um, now. In, we also had the Challenger armor. So this was the NERPG Challenger body. And I just forgot to remove the controller from that. So we want to just set the animation controller to none on that. And actually, I want to do that on all of them. So on the body two and on the helm. I just want to set the animation controller to none, so it's not trying to animate these things here, basically. Let's load the game again, and I just want to see if switching the Blacksmith rig type to generic actually fixes his animation. So now if we go over here, we can see that these things are completely still and they're not animated anymore because I removed the animation controller from them. So that part is working. And if we look at our blacksmith, switching the rig type, uh, the animation type to generic worked, um, which is actually really cool because uh, it looks like it's, uh, it looks okay. We got the sparks. We got the hammer in the hand. So this is great because um, he's got a humanoid bone rig, but he can still play that generic animation. And I just love the sparks. In a future episode, um, I'll make it so that we can actually hear like a clinking sound every time he hits. Um, but for now, because he's just doing an idle animation to make a clinking sound, I would actually have to make this into some sort of like um, spell or ability basically and just have it looping, which we don't have the capability for yet in the engine. Okay, um, I think I'm pretty good with that. It's really too bad about Arishkin's eyes. I think it would be awesome if he did do that kind of cool alien blink. Um, you know what I'm wondering? We might be able to do the same trick with Arishkin to get the eye blink to work by just switching the thing to generic. So let's try that. Go to the Arishkin model here. Go to the source. 
go to the character scene 2, go to the animation, we'll go to the rig, we'll set this back to generic and hit apply. Now, hopefully, we'll end up getting his animation properly animating his eyes. For now, I don't really need, like, he doesn't need to be generic, hopefully. In the same way that the blacksmith is basically a humanoid rig playing a generic animation. Oh, uh, yeah, never mind. There we are. Okay. Oh, there we go. I just saw him blink. Oh, wow, yeah, he's blinking lots now. He's blinking, like, super fast. Okay, very cool. Very, very, very cool. And let's see, is he properly swaying? Or she? I keep on forgetting it's a she. Yeah, she's sort of swaying, like, just barely. But she is swaying and blinking. Cool. So now we have a bazaar with people sort of showing off their wares that we can come and buy stuff at and we're going to use this because in the next episode we're going to be making some new uma armor um, and i'll be showing ways to create recolors of all sorts of different types of uma armor from this type here where you can basically just do a color to this one here where you've got to go in and edit the diffuse maps to this one over here where for these ones um, you have to actually use like a gimp to do a hue saturation trick to make them. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you like this uh, this cool little bazaar that we got going on here. And if you uh, did like it, then don't forget to thumbs up the video, subscribe to the NERPG YouTube channel, or just leave a note in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time.